Tonight's demonstration is on cumulonimbus clouds. All right, and so um, if you're a meteorologist, maybe you understand what that means. If you're not, you're gonna go, hmm. I remember that from maybe grade school and that's stuff I don't think about anymore. So uh, the big fluffy clouds is what I like to call them. So um, I am going to do a demonstration on cumulonimbus clouds, which are those big poofy fluffy building up into which eventually sometimes become thunderstorms. Um, but they're gorgeous and they look wonderful um, from a distance. <laughs> and this particular um, design I'm going to share with you is going to be done over water so you can kind of get an understanding of why they get sort of flat on the bottom. So let's go ahead and get overhead on that. Let me get these things out here first. So when I put it overhead, it won't freak out. So here's my overhead. There we go. Boop. This way. All right. Okay, so tonight's demonstration, we're going to do cumulonimbus clouds and I'm going to sh share with you, um, first we're going to put like a background on um, over some ocean water and it's just going to be flat for now. Um, but I want to share with you that I'm going to use a couple of different brushes to show you how to create these because not everybody has these mop brushes. So I'm going to show you how to create them with our one stroke scruffy brushes using the half inch and the three quarter inch scruffy brushes. And then I'm also going to show you how to do it with our half inch um, soft natural hair mop. This is goat hair and these are available on my website and you can also order them from onestroke.com. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to work with both of those brushes tonight, but first we got to get our color on our canvas. Okay, so let me put out some colors here. I've got some Prussian blue. And I'm going to put some wicker white out. My bottles are um, towards the bottom, so it's faster if I unscrew them. All right. And then, like last week, I'm going to use some dove gray, which will be a little off from white, and you'll see the difference there. So it's a very light gray. And then I'm also going to put out some cobalt blue, and that's going to be our sky color for this time. Okay. Last time I used, or last week I used some different uh, colors for sky. And if you didn't get a chance to see the wispy clouds and the basic cloud um, creation, go back and watch last week's live, or it will soon be up on my, um, my YouTube channel too, okay? All right, so let's set those and flatten those out. And I'm gonna take my um, sponge here and I'm gonna get my fingers damp and just rub a little water over those. Okay, and we're gonna pick up my sky color first. So I'm gonna get some cobalt here and some white, okay? And this is a 10 by 10 wrapped canvas. So we're gonna apply this color. And this is a gallery wrap, so it's got the inch and a half, inch and three quarter edges all right, and so I'm gonna make sure I get those. Let's get a little more color here. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna use mostly my sky color because we have a big um, cloud to put in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my way down with the white. So we've got a darker top, like I explained last week, the closer the sky is to you, the brighter, more vibrant it is, and the further away, the less vibrant it is. And so what's happening here? Oh, I'm pushing and it's taking it off the, um, the wood frame behind there. So don't push so hard. We'll cover that up with clouds though. Okay, so I want a little brighter, lighter area of white over on this side, even more so than the rest of it, because this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, where our light is going to be coming from. The, the sun is going to be coming from the right side of our canvas. Okay. All right. So now we're going to come down to about here. And I'm going to make sure I've got my color on both sides. 
Okay. Then I'm going to come and pick up the Prussian blue for our water. Okay. And so I've got a good amount of Prussian on my loaded sponge. And I'm going to go and turn my canvas this way so it's um, vertical to me. And I'm going to find where I want to start my horizon with the top of my sponge. And I'm going to press down and pull towards me. It's, this is the best way to get a straight horizon. Okay, then I can proceed with the rest filling in with the water. There we go. So pick up more of that color and we're going to come forward. Now I'm going to address this, not like I'm on the shore, but that I'm out in the water. So my water color is pretty much going to be all one deep ocean color. Okay. So pretend we're out in a boat on the sea, maybe on a cruise. And we're looking at these clouds in the distance that are growing and accumulating, towering above us. but not coming towards us because that would mess up our crews, right? Okay, so there we have our canvas. I'm going to go ahead and fold that up, put it in my brush basin so it doesn't dry out on me. And we're going to work in the sky. Now, what, I, what a lot of times people struggle with their clouds is because they don't have an idea in, your, in their head of what they want the cloud to look like. Okay, so first of all, you want to think about um, the shape of your cloud. And sometimes it helps to um, consider a geometric shape. Okay, so I'm trying to find, I'm just going to use a blue pencil. Let me see if this is going to show up. And kind of, not real well. I'm just going to use a gray pencil. Okay. So you want to think about these in terms of kind of a geometric shape, which means they're going to have a flat bottom when they're accumulating and lifting up this, they, they have a fairly flat bottom and it's usually pretty low. And then clouds behind them will come even lower below that. So you might only see just a little bit of those clouds um, and maybe they're back into the, um, to the left here, peeking out. And then you're going to have kind of a lift here. I'm going to do this in chalk because I want to be able to erase this. Where's there it is. Okay. So hopefully that's going to show. Can you see that white? Maybe I can come down just a little. There we go. Okay, so you've got this bottom here and here, and then you have these kind of geometric shaped towers that your clouds are going to um, occupy that space. And maybe you've got a little one here, and then it comes down here, and maybe it goes right off the side of your canvas right there. Now, the thing is, is that these have backs to them. Okay, so depending on your angle, you're going to be looking at them from below, right? So this is going to have some depth in, to it underneath, and you're going to see these sides, right? Like boxes, okay? So think about that, and maybe that'll help you. So I've got a height and then it comes down. This is a little higher. This one comes a little lower. All right. So let's look at now creating the, um, the lighter edges of these, and then we'll start building back some of the shaded portions of them. Okay. So I'm going to take this, um, mop. This is a half inch mop and I'm going to get mo floating medium on it. Let's come over this way so you can see. Okay. So I'm picking up floating medium. And I'm going to get um, a little bit of cobalt on the back edge of this. And then I'm going to come and get some white on the front. So I'm loading this. I want you to see I'm loading this 
so I'm pushing on the bottom corner and the front top corner is touching the edge of the white. Can you see that? All right, so that's all the paint I'm going to pick up. Got a loose hair there. And so we're going to come here and start to create the light edge of the side of this cloud. See there? So that's that side of that tower. And then you might have some poofy. So the way I'm putting this brush onto my canvas in the same way that I'm loading the brush. So I've got that corner push down and the top edge that has the white is shoving and swirling, creating that poofy outer edge of the cloud. Okay. And so my bottom doesn't have a whole lot of color, but it's the same color as the background of my sky, maybe just slightly darker. All right. And we're making swirls. So my brush is at an angle to the canvas, not straight up and down. Okay. So we've got that side right there. And then we're going to come here and do the side of that side. A little more and we're going to come here and we're going to go off the side of our canvas so right here and pull that down okay so that's the um the light side the side that's got the light hitting it and then you might have some um tops here that have light coming in there Okay, and then maybe you've got some more down here, but we can't put those in just yet. And maybe we have this one here. Okay, now I'm going to wipe that brush off. And we're going to come and get this Dove Gray and a touch of Prussian Blue. Work that together with the Dove Gray. Okay on this brush might get a touch more medium but not a lot and what we want to do now is we're going to come here and we're going to create the bottom edge the bottom of these clouds that needs to be a little bit stronger so i'm going to come get a little more prussian and work it in with that dove gray there we go so it should look like a shadow Right, the bottom part of it is a shadow. And then we're going to come up here and do another one. This is the one that's in the in behind this one, right? And so then this <coughs> excuse me, this portion here is above it. So it's closer to you. So Prussian blue mixed with the medium or dove gray, not medium gray. All right. And remember we said this thing had dimension to it so it comes down right you're looking at it from underneath so you're going to see the bottom part of this cloud there we go okay so it's like creating a shadow casting a shadow on itself all right now with this same color i'm going to pick up just the same way i did with um the white, I'm going to tap in and get the gray onto the top part and the Prussian and gray mix is here. Okay. So now we're going to come and we're going to put, let me get just a touch more Prussian. Oop, there we go. We're going to put some of this in front of what we just put with the light color. All right. So see how that's looking like a shaded where it's the sunlight's not hitting it. You know, when you look at the clouds, part of it has light hitting it and part of it doesn't. But this part, let me get a little more, is going to be more solid because there's no holes in here. It's a big piece of cloud. All right, so we're just going to keep layering this down. A little more pressure as we go down, especially because we want that a little darker. See that? Get more of that gray, the dove gray, and we're making swirls. We're going to come over here and do 
this into that white. It's starting to really look like something, but we've got a few more steps to go, okay? So this is really a study in creating the clouds as a major part of your design for a landscape, okay? You want the clouds to stand out. You want them to be painterly looking. All right, and you want them to be a, a noticeable piece, not something in the background. Okay, so now we've got, let's just finish this up, kind of filling in, oop, get a little more of that pressure, filling in this shaded, shadowy piece of cloud down here. And that's going to come right over there. Okay, and now what we want to do is start to define some lighter areas in and amongst this uh, bit of the shaded. So I'm going to come and get a little white on that gray edge, still working with that same dirty brush. And so right in here, and this paint is wet still, so it's going to um, absorb and tone down slightly. But I'm coming in and just tapping, um, swirling, I should say, not tapping, a lighter edge. And you have to work at the top and then come below and then below. So you're creating levels. Okay, so now I can come and tap in just little bits of that light. See, because that first one that I put on there is really faded into the background. So if you want to lighten it up, you've got to come back in and put some stronger light on it. Okay, so see how that's really starting to take shape. And every cloud is different, like every snowflake, right? So you can have, you get a little medium. Medium's going to help the color move. You can have lots of different shapes. Okay, but remember that the, the right side is where the sunlight is hitting, so I don't want too much bright on the opposite side, okay? So I'm just continuing to kind of scrub that in there. A little of the gray might come in here so it's not as bright. Maybe get a little bit of that cobalt on the back end. Oops. Only on the back end. There we go. You don't want that too bright in there. See, that's got too bright. So let me take that back out. Let's kind of work that back in here. So this is going to take a little longer than, um, you know, our basic one stroke paintings. And you're going to be working at it a little more, but I think you'll like the results a lot um, in terms of it being, you know, the subject of your painting, not just background. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to come back and get some more of this gray with the Prussian. And we can come... Put a little bit of tail on this, soften and smooth it out. A little bit of white. There we go. Okay, so see how you've got that little blend. And this is dark. So we've got those little tower heights, right? Now I'm going to pop up on this other side. 
right here and we're going to create another little tower. So I showed you how to do it there. Now it's in my head. I know a little better what size shape I want to create. I'm going to add my dark in here and then bring this down a little more and then bring that out. Then I can come get my white. Right, and we're going to create, stroke in a little bit of the light edge on that. A little white edge on here. All right, and then underneath, I'm going to let this dry up a little bit. Underneath, we can put in the farther away clouds. Right, remember we said there was a little shelf further away and these were underneath here. Get a little bit of that Prussian in there. Bring those together. And I'm going to clean my brush out with a little bit of medium here. And work that together and push that shadow back up underneath there. Okay. So I hope this is helping you. This is a little bit different way to create clouds from what you're used to using these mop brushes. All right. And I'm going to put some of this um, cobalt back in here with a little bit of white. There we go. All right. And we're just going to bring all this down here together. More gray with the blue. Okay. So I'll let that dry a little bit and then you can come in and do more. And if you don't like that much activity going on, right, you want it a little more um, sub subdued, right, you can come back in here and bring that all back down with the shaded color. And you just have that little bit up here that's lit up. Okay. So sometimes it's a process, right? Maybe you want to take some of that out too. So that's the Prussian and the gray, dove gray back together here. And you can come in and shade their shadow that back in there. Right now you've got a little more <clears throat> towering look to it. And then you can put some of that white back around the part that the light is hitting. And that's starting to really look like something now. Right, so we have some white coming down here. And here. So those were fun. Okay, so that's using that mop brush. Now I want you to see that you can take... Um, uh, this is a half inch scruffy and I'm going to put medium on it, right? And we can do a very similar look. But I want you to think about, don't do this for both of them at, at the same time. So you want, um, if you're going to do it with one type of brush, do it with one type of brush. Don't mix the two together because you'll get two different looks and they won't look right. All right. So I'm going to get the Prussian and the medium gray, or the dove gray, I should say. And you can come in here. We're going to do another little tower, but um, this time I'm just, I've got the medium or the dove gray, darn it, on the upper part of my brush and I'm making circles. So if you don't have the mop, you can do it this way. And then you can put in the dark shadowing below with the Prussian. I can tip back on there and then tip forward to put the light color in. Okay. So 
very similar but not quite the same look so you just want to be careful pick one and do it try one try the other but don't put them in the same painting okay so I can tip forward and get my light edge and then tip back and get my shaded part and you can even sweep side to side and get that shadow underneath and maybe darken that just a little more with the Prussian a little more with the Prussian and the gray and come right across here and sweep that or you can use a flat brush if that's easier for you okay but remember it needs to come down a ways because you're looking at it from underneath so you want to have that angle all right and then you can start to put in another layer of light not a hundred percent light just partly light and then finish with a little bit of white on that outside edge so this is a little bit different process but you're going to tip that out there making little circles with it and some days I get better results with one brush and other days I get better results with another so I kind of like this one better <laughs> Okay, so there we have that light edge, and then you've got the shading underneath, and we come right off that side. And then we've got some, let's put some of that dark back in, like I showed you with the medium, or the dove gray. Put that back in there, and bring some through here. Keep that light edge to the right side because the light's coming from this direction. Okay, so both of those brushes give you some really pretty looks and I hope you will consider doing a painting that is just about clouds and give yourself um, some practice using the mop brush or the scruffy or both to create some really dramatic looking cumulonimbus clouds. So fun stuff. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that demo. Um, I hope you like creating clouds. And if you don't, I hope this helped you to feel a little more comfortable about that.